so let's move on now uh, from Pokemon, which took us to a weird conversation. Uh, <laughs> yeah. to the PlayStation State of Play uh, that happened last week. This was the first State of Play um, of 2021. And yep. we got a sense of, well, we got some updates of some of their first party titles. Uh, I was happy that they opened up with a look at Returnal. I'm really excited mm -hmm. about Returnal. We learn more about the story in Returnal. Um, you play as, oh my God, now I forgot her name. I think Stella? Celine. Stella? Thank you. Celine, and she is an Astro Scouter, which like that in itself term, I'm, I'm like Star Trek vibes, like give me all the vibes. Yeah, um, yeah. So she kind of gets this um, ping from a planet and she decides to go to that planet and There's she's kind some of caught very in unexpected this developments of, like, in your future <laughs> and, like, shocking events that we but you can't figure it. there's obviously a bigger mystery here so we've got to see some gameplay about that and that just I, I i actually am sold with that game i'm really excited i was excited before with returnal but i'm even more excited with that one um as well as we got a look at crash it's about time um, they're announcing the PlayStation 5 version, which will be released yep. on March 12th, 2021 mm -hmm. this year. Um, and it will be faster, obviously, with loading times, uh, safe transfers, 3D audio, all that stuff. Plus, we're going to get some uh, dual sense yeah. features as well. So it's going to be Ooh. interesting how they utilize like the adaptive triggers. Um, they say right. like, when you're pulling certain things, you're going to feel that. I don't know how much more you could feel that if the game wasn't specifically built or PlayStation 5, um, you know, I feel like it's going to kind of be on the lines of Miles Morales where you get a sense of that. But sure. Right. Yeah. At least Am they're I... at least they're trying. At least they're not just leaving these features in the dust. I really like hearing about it, that they're still working and trying to develop these into older mm -hmm. games as well, because yeah. I think it proves that this isn't just a feature that only new games on the PS5 will have. This is right. something yes. that they can implement into older games to give them a new yeah. feel, a completely new feel. Yeah, yes. I, that's that's what I'm excited as well. Like I hear the same thing is going to happen for Avengers when that gets the next gen update. It's going to have yeah. some features with the controller, which I'm excited about. Um, um, but I guess, but yeah, like I'm also excited as well to see what they're going to do with Crash. Anytime I hear that a game's going to get some sort of update that implements Dual Sense, my my ears perk up. You know, my eyes perk up because I want to see what those what that implementation is going to look like. That is for me one of the biggest new things from next gen is that dual sense controller. And I cannot wait to see what PlayStation five exclusive games are going to look like and feel like playing on that controller. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um, we also got a look at um, knockout city, uh, which, okay, cool. Doesn't really interest me. I don't know if you guys were interested about that one. You're not interested in yeah. that. Right? Okay. Knockout city. No. It looks I'm, like a Splatoon so, I'm so <laughs> excited. I'm really? excited. I'm gonna play that beta. I'm excited. Uh, you, you know what? You guys are lame. All right, Knockout City. I'm in. All right, that looks like so much fun. Are you kidding me? A dodgeball game? Three v three competitive? You gotta, you gotta dodge, dive, dip. Uh, I forgot. Man, I forgot all dip, five of them. Was dip, it dodge, dodge, dip, 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 dodge, dip, dive, dodge, dodge, dip, dive, dodge, dodge, dodge dip, duck, and dodge. dodge. He yes. dodge. Yes, yeah, there's two dodges. Yeah, yeah. two dodges. <laughs> okay, well, um, like and you're person. not a fan. And you say you're <laughs> not a fan. <laughs> Knockout City looks like a fun game for two weeks. And then yes. it's going to be a game that everyone forgets about. Okay, I'll give you that. That is probably true. But yeah. like... <laughs> yeah. And then there's always going to be the one friend in in each group that's like, you guys want to play Knockout City? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. And you just go pure offline yeah. you know what <laughs> you know what doesn't look like a two-week game uh and a game that i am like has jumped up my most anticipated list for this year i hope oh. it's the same one i'm thinking of sifu yes, yes. that game looks amazing yeah the art direction the combat it looks incredible. I was getting some, even from just the fight in the hallway, I was getting some like old boy vibes. Raid, you know, I was devil, yeah. raid. Yeah. Oh my God. It looks like so much fun. Everything about that right now. I'm like, I'm all in. I cannot mm -hmm. wait to play that game. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys ever played Absolver. Uh, it's the same studio that's that's making the yes. see-through. Mm. You, pl you played Absolver? Yes. No. I have not, but the developer slow clap. Yeah. Um, 
but I've heard good things about Absolver. So it does combat extremely well. I think that's the that's the one takeaway from that game is that it, it almost has a similar uh, combat structure as like Ghost of Tsushima in a way where you have like these different stances and you have to kind of counter your opponent in like whether okay. it's like, high range mid range or, or low and stuff like that and you kind of see like they just kind of took that piece from absolver and just ran with it to make this kung fu game and knowing that 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 makes me really excited because I, I think absolver nailed that aspect yeah of the game. here's the thing usually see that in fighting games right mm -hmm. like we never get an action adventure kung fu game that's like literally like a, a it's a fist fight yeah. right um so i think that's going to be really interesting looks cool the art style mm -hmm. what were you gonna say Millie? i was gonna say too the thing about absolver is that amongst all of these weapons sometimes using your fist was the the most deadliest thing like yeah you could disarm someone and beat them to death in a matter of seconds it, and that's what i when i heard that they were working on sifu i was like oh this, this is gonna be a good kung fu game this yeah. is gonna feel really nice uh you can continue camille sorry i was just gonna say absolver they made the hand-to-hand -hand combat feel no, really no, cool. just... i'm i'm looking at no, absolver no, too yeah. and and absolver just like it looks amazing but i will say it looks like it's the, a bit more slower paced in terms of combat, it is. a bit more methodical yeah. whereas sifu is like all in on the speed you know like mm -hmm. oh man i'm super super excited for that game i, I had no idea it was coming i didn't know if there was any uh, mention of it before the state of play no, no. but uh seeing it revealed again the the art style the gameplay the story even all intrigues me very much and it's it's jumped up there on my highly anticipated games for this year the cool thing is like what we saw from that gameplay is you're going to be seeing like the environment i i feel like is going to have a huge weight on how you play the game as well because yeah um you know you have to use pieces within that environment to kind of take down enemies um they did mention mm -hmm. though that there is going to be like um slow so that you could choose if you want like a female character or a male character and that character as they progress there will be like changes to like how the character appears but I don't think it's like a full customization of um, the character, like a, a character creation. We're not getting that. But it's going to be really cool that we see that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Another I also one, like that you were seeing yeah. like the character aging. You're so like the character, I wonder what that's about. I could be mistaken, but I thought I heard like when they were talking about it is that it works under a mechanic that every time you die, you slowly age up. Yeah. Oh. Yes, that's what I... I got it as well from that. Okay. Okay. I couldn't, I could, I didn't know if I misunderstood that, but that, that seems to be like what it is. Is that like Interesting. every time you, you get like a game over screen or something like that, or your character dies, like you just like progress. Uh, I don't know how much, like five years or something, which is oh, cool. We cool. Yeah. At, at state of play too, we saw three separate games that have this mechanic in it. Mm -hmm. uh, Returnal has it. Yeah. Um, Death Loop, obviously. I mean, it's yeah. right. kind of self-explanatory yeah. there. Uh, and then Sifu. It, it kind of, I'm kind of interested to see how these three titles each do it differently, considering that they were all announced mm -hmm. in the same direct, or mm -hmm. sorry, God, <laughs> the same state of play. Um, I, I want to see how they develop. I can we just talk about really quickly at the end of Returnal, she opens that door again yeah they, they know again. they know what they're doing yep. they, they yep. know like i'm, I'm just I want so them excited to then that. use the next like few state or like a few state of plays away i just want them to use that scene then it's actually silent hill and you're like that'd be great <laughs> it feels like they're just setting us up you know? i, I want to say as well as a general note i i do want to talk like a little more about the games that were revealed during the state of play but in general what did you guys think of the state of play because like like, I like Sifu. I thought Returnal looks cool. I know everyone was going crazy about a game that we'll talk about, I'm sure, in, in a bit. Mm -hmm. But in yeah. general, I'm not sure if this state of play really, like, brought the thunder like I'm sure a lot of people were expecting it to. Maybe it did for other people. Maybe I'm just, I don't know. No, no, I, I totally I agree. Think on, yeah. I think it's all I think expectations. You're on the mark there. I, exactly. It's all expectations because we know PlayStation has those excuses. Yeah. We know that we want a big reveal like we got with God of War. Mm -hmm. We know we're hoping and anticipating on something with Silent Hill that we think PlayStation would make that announcement. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we know that uh, God of War is heavily in production right now. So 
we're hoping that we'll get something of that, whatever Naughty Dog is working on. So I think a lot of, uh, you know, we're kind of stuck in our nostalgia. A lot of um, fans of PlayStation and their exclusives kind of want those updates. Spider-Man 2, we haven't really heard anything for a really long time. Mm -hmm. um, so we're just anticipating that. And although they didn't give us like the IPs that we know so well and that we hold dear to our hearts, they did give us some quality updates. And, you know, one IP, obviously, there's huge fans about which we'll get to in a bit but um i feel mm -hmm. like yeah it was it was it was still a good state of play it just wasn't a shocking state of play yes yeah. i think yeah. that's a good way to this... put it yeah and i think a lot of the sorry sorry i just oh, want to point out that i think a lot of this uh falls on the shoulders of the community i mean there's only so much that sony and playstation can do to set expectations they said like as they announced it this is only going to be for the first early 2021 so you can already take mm. horizon off the board god of war off the board spider-man off the board yet so many people were like well where are those games i wanted those games it's like well they said that... what, yeah what, like what are you trying to do they, they can't downplay it to be like okay you're gonna get sifu because then people aren't gonna tune in right exactly. yeah yeah there's only is. so much they can do and you gotta just temper your expectations especially with like covid going on like we're not getting bangers after banger announcements like it's just not gonna happen yeah no, this, during the week. this state of play more felt like for me that they're setting up <clears throat> for the games that they're going to release for the ps5 they're trying to get people to get onto the ps5 mm -hmm. see that they can play these older games remastered they you know announced quite a few remasters um and I think they're trying to get this big push of getting from everyone from the PS4 to the PS5 generation, even mm -hmm. though they don't have the stock right now for it. As soon as they announce those games, the stock is going to be gone again. So yeah. they're trying to get people to slowly get on board now before they announce those titles, before they do a big shipment of PS5s, and then it's all yeah. gone, and then sure. you can't play it at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's a good point. Because if they can really get this game. little buzz going and get people to slowly pick up their PS5s because they want to play a title or two, then you don't have this big commotion of like, crap, God of War is here, and I need yeah. to go buy a PS5 right now, and then it, you can't get them anywhere. That, that you, you bring up an excellent point on the, on the business aspect of mm -hmm. this, uh, about like, you know, putting together these events and these game reveals and all that stuff is that they want to make sure people got PS5s if they're yeah. going to get God of War. So and yeah, will, that makes sense. And I, and yeah, I it do makes... appreciate too, um, like what they're doing there. Like it makes sense, um, you know, we, we need to build up to um, the platform that God of War is going to be on, right? Yeah. Um, but I appreciate as well with the state of play and what they do is they have lots, like they have their indies and, you know, other, um, other direct type uh, conferences have this as well, where they have their indie indies intertwined, whereas Nintendo Direct usually has a direct, like an indie direct. Um, and Steve, you brought up a good point, right? Like if they were just to say, oh yeah, it's an indie, people wouldn't watch right. it, right? Yeah. Um, they right. And I, I feel like that's kind of unfair to those indie developers that are looking to be on a platform or are looking to be yeah. exclusive to PlayStation because exactly. of the name, just to not have viewers pay attention and you know i i feel like because we're so bombarded with the hype of those first party titles that we forget to appreciate the indies um yeah. and appreciate the beauty of something like sifu yeah you guys um, you guys bring up some excellent points especially in the context of like thinking about a game like sifu where if they were to say oh this this direct's going to be a little more focused on indie games a lot less eyes on a game that looks as good as it does in sifu mm -hmm. um so I guess yeah, that's that's fair. You got you got to market the state of play as something that that will be exciting and will be something to look forward to. But obviously, there needs to be some tempering of expectations from the community to not always expect every time there's a state of play, we're going to see Spider Man, God of War, and Horizon, and all that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Now, um, I'm so I know we're going to get into the big one, but really quickly, I just want to mention Kina Bridge of Spirits looks yeah absolutely yeah. gorgeous, and yeah. with that. With that new Pixar movie coming out pretty soon, I think it's Raya, Raya? and the Last Dragon. Raya. Raya, yeah. Okay, Raya and the Last Dragon. This feels like a nod of PlayStation saying, hey, look, we have these family-friendly, beautiful experiences alongside, you know, games like 
Returnal and Odd World and you know Final mm-hmm. Fantasy and Sifu. I, it, it, I'm excited that they put this in there because this could have easily been a game that just got an article on their blog. But it's so gorgeous and it looks so well designed. I personally am going to try it out. Oh, me too. Uh, um, Ryan, yeah. um, sorry, I was about to say Ryan. <laughs> Kenya. <laughs> uh, Kenna. Sorry, Kenna and uh, the Bridge of Spirits actually caught my eye before in the last state mm-hmm. of play um just because the little like i don't know that little fuzzy yeah. character just looks so adorable yeah um yeah. it has that key factor to this game right but then when you're actually seeing it in this direct you're seeing more of the gameplay you're hearing more of the story so she's like a guard or a guide to souls i don't know if you guys saw pixar's pixar soul uh oh, yeah. on disney it, this kind of gives me that that vibe of like having these souls that need to be guided to wherever they're going next, or maybe they get um, corrupted somehow, mm-hmm. or they turn corrupted into like these big monsters. So like, I'm really interested in actually playing this because the trailer this time like really really did a good job of highlighting uh, this game. Mm. Yeah. yeah, this yeah, is it's, it's my a beautiful looking game. Was, yeah. It's a beautiful looking game. Uh, it's really cute too. Like. You know, the little animals or whatever they are, I don't know, but it all it it looks it's gonna be a fun game to play, I imagine. And and this was this was shown before, right? We saw it the PlayStation when, Five. The, the last, PlayStation yeah, Five reveal. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've I've always um, been looking forward to it. Yeah. We also had um hyperlight drift uh sorry, from the hyper left uh from hyper light drifter <laughs> developer. Um it was Solar Ash. This this looks interesting just because the colors. I don't know if I'll mm. play, mm-hmm. but for it for being there i was really shocked by this next one though five nights at freddy's i thought we were done with that franchise and here I'm pretty we are, sure we are. <laughs> a lot of us are <laughs> i don't think we are though i feel like although you know we're tired of it because it was just around forever as soon as security breach comes out people are going to be streaming it we're going to be hearing about five nights at freddy and they're saying it's going to be the best freddy's game um as developers do say with all of their sequels I mean, uh, yeah, of i'm shocking the developers they were going to say it's the worst one will be the best <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is going to be the worst five nights at it's, freddy's it's like when a uh, when an actor who's working on an upcoming movie is like oh man guys this movie is amazing and it hits the headlines it's like <laughs> what did you think he was going to say like, right. he's it's working on it he's got to so promote it, it. Yeah, seriously. Could you imagine though if they're just like, yeah, it's, it's gonna be okay. It's a good one. Yeah. It was all right. I you guess. know, it'll Don't be like somewhere money. in the it's middle of quality <laughs> in terms of the Five Nights at Freddy franchise. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> it's our best, but it was okay. <laughs> um, then we got to see some Death Loop. Now, Death Loop um, from Arcane is one of those games that, like, again, was on my radar. I knew I was gonna play. It sounds really interesting. I love the whole, I like the vibe around it. And now seeing more gameplay, I want it right now. I want to play that game right yeah. now. Yeah. I, yeah, I was sold on this fun. game a long time ago. The more I see it, like I just I just don't want to see this game anymore. I just want to play it at this point. I I do appreciate all the trailers. They they look like stylistically really good uh and and produ- well produced, but every time they show it, I'm like, okay. I've, I've seen this game. Like I know what this game is at this point. When's it right. dropping? Do we have a release date? It's May 10th, I believe. Okay. Sorry. It's, yeah, yeah. yeah. Six, oh, no. Let me double check. May 21st. May 21st. 21st. Cool. Yeah. May 21st. Cool. So, not that um, far away. It's not too yeah. far away. Not too far away at all. Um, and then they ended the state of play with you know, an update to, I guess, one of the bi- a big title. Mm-hmm. Um, right. And that is Final Fantasy VII Remake. They announced Intergrade, which is going to be like a story a new story episode um for final fantasy 7 i think a lot of people were hoping this would be the introduction to the second part (laughs) finding out when the second part of final fantasy 7 remake will come but we're not there what's interesting about this story episode is that you have uh, they introduce us to luffy um in the original ff7 game she's kind of like this character you could beat the game and you you don't have to have luffy Mm -hmm. um as a part so like it's really cool that she's kind of getting her own story because some people who played the first one probably didn't even have Luffy uh, around <laughs> at all. Um, and they also introduced some new characters that were not in the original as well, which is which is great. Uh, I, I've always said this: Final Fantasy VII a remake is doing a really great job as ha- of how we think um, 
remakes should be or like uh you know, I, I feel like usually when we hear a remake of a game, we want it exactly the same. Um, but Final Fantasy VII is a great way to play on people's nostalgia while introducing new elements and expanding yeah. the story even further. Right. Just sucks that's happening over the course of like how many years? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I oh, see. I don't know anything about Final Fantasy and the story is so so impossible to follow that I thought this was the part two that everyone was anticipating. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't think so you were confused. alone on that. Yeah, no, I don't no, know. No. Um, Caboose, yeah. why would they give people the part two when they can remake the part one and then just make more money? And then you gotta wait for part then, two for a couple more years. And then right. all while you do that, two movies release and the story gets even more convoluted. So And then they need to do all these different DLC packs because the new yep. characters need to be explained more and then they go from the there. New, right. Mm -hmm. But then you then gotta you play the all two. that before you play part two so that way you're up to date. Okay? Mm -hmm. Uh huh. In ten years, <laughs> I get it now. And, and the cool thing with this too, uh, they did say that PlayStation Five owners will get the free um, upgrade if they own yeah. the PlayStation Four oh, nice. version. Oh, nice, nice. So, so that's really cool too. I, I'm excited about that uh, just because I want to play as Lupin. Yeah, variant yeah. yeah. story a bit more. Cool. I'm excited too. This is the first Final Fantasy game I've actually enjoyed. So, like all the content and like Yuffie as a character is brand new to me. I have no idea what her story is but i'm excited to, to at least play it and see again going yeah. going back to uh our topic of like um playstation 5 upgrades I, i'm excited to see like exactly how big of an upgrade this is going to be because i mean a big crucial point of final fantasy 7 remake was like all the background textures were pretty rough like the doors the, the trash around the area when you looked at them they were like oof it's like playstation 2 quality oh, but okay. I'm, I'm wondering if the upgrade yeah. will be you know a big upgrade is oh, is a lot better so i found um one because in the state of play they kind of show the difference between the um, ps4 version and the ps5 version yeah. so the background textures that was one of the first things that they highlighted with the upgrade so that is improved however i will say when you do look at the difference between the two although the background textures are improved it isn't a drastic no, no, change not at all it's like barely barely noticeable in some things mm. that they highlighted but i have a feeling that this is going to get a lot of constant updates only because they're going to be testing stuff for the part two mm. they this is a great opportunity for them to test background textures you know mess with the lighting mess with the adaptive right. triggers experiment with a lot of little things that maybe people won't get that mad about if it messes up initially or it doesn't work because guess what they can just pull it out of the remake you can say it's a remake there was some issues you know whatever it's sure. uh, it's going to be a great little uh testing ground for them and, and i think it's going to sell well especially if you have it on ps4 yeah. you're going to get the free upgrade and like you said they're adding so much content where i'm not super familiar with final fantasy 7 so i'm excited to be able to test it out with higher graphic fidelity i don't want to always mm. downgrade just to experience something sure. uh, as a general question if i'm someone who literally has just no knowledge about final fantasy play, can i jump remake. into can i jump into the remake and have like even the slightest clue of what's going on yeah absolutely because, uh, the yeah remake, it's like completely all final fantasies they're completely different stories like that's one of the thing the bane mm -hmm. of like every final fantasy fan uh final fantasy uh fans existence it's like why can't they just connect these stories a little bit better um okay so, yeah. so yeah you could just jump into seven they completely set and i actually would say seven is probably the best one to jump into if you have no really no previous knowledge of Final Fantasy, I think this is the best one to um, jump into because it completely sets up the world. It's more relatable. Um, the characters are much cooler. You can tell I'm a Final Fantasy VII fan. It's, it's really <laughs> only Final Fantasy that I could hear the seventh installment is the one that would be the yeah. best to jump into with zero knowledge of what's going on. Because I yeah. think just how Seven, especially with the remake, how they do it, um, it's just like when you have a 
voice actors, um, you know, voice cast, it's easier to take in the information, especially when all of the information is kind of made up and like long terminologies for things um, to follow if you if you've never heard of the world of Final Fantasy before. Okay. So, so I would, if you're curious about it, just play the first part, and we'll see what happens with the second part. Uh, but I want to go back to what Malik says quickly before we take a break. Uh, you said like they could kind of test out everything here in preparation for the second one. But I would say, okay, remember now the second one's already in development. I think it's far in development to even make huge changes to the game, um, mm -hmm. which means we're probably going to get the second installment for PlayStation 4 as well. Maybe the third installment, they, like, can they even break up the series to have the third installment exclusive for PlayStation 5 and then another version for PlayStation 4?